What is up everyone? Samurai Jack here for some Akori for an Akoria special opening. A pre-release kit and the booster box. Now before I get to the opening, I do need to address the minor elephant in the room of why I did not post a Kids Choice Awards uh reaction to voting. That's because of two things. One, obviously Amazon. Actually technically two and a half, I just realized. So one, Amazon, not kind of an obvious factor, no, not exactly have enough time to just do it, kind of. Uh, number two, basically what's going on that apparently if I say it is the equivalent of, is the equivalent of Voldemort in terms of demonetization. So you know that part. And two and a half, because of the thing that shall not be named is because I was unaware of what they were gonna do for Kids Choice Awards or whether or not it was gonna be delayed but you know like my favorite movie franchise is Tommy life finds a way um I but though I did see it and obviously and no surprise, Spongebob won animated show but surprisingly is Stranger Things as a fan family t as a family picture because yeah when i think family friendly entertainment i think of dogs with rafflesia faces that even though i haven't seen can absorb souls and eldritch abominations in the sky or something like that again all i know is rafflesia face dogs and a tentacle monster that kind of looks like a mix between emrakul and uamog i really you think I would have time, but again, essential being an essential worker is tough work. But with that my that explanation out of the way, let's get into this. I also forgot to upload some Throne of Eldraine and Theros Beyond Death openings. Nice die. And our foil promo is Mythos of Brokos. Two generic and two green for a sorcery that uh, if you pay a normal, just the cost, just return two permanents from your graveyard to hand. But if you do two green and blue and black, you can entomb. Search for your card and put it into the graveyard. Pretty synergistic and soul, pretty much any soul tie deck would city see. Or Modrotha. Now then, on to the packs. Oh yeah, and also, just when I was about to rename the channel, uh, the Samurai Jack game was announced, and I'm like, you son of a bitch, I'm in. Majestic Garcorn, Unbreakable Bond, Grim Dancer. Oh, Brokos! Brokos, my. Huh, funny. We get Brokos and his myth. Anyways, too generic. Black, green, blue for the Nightmare Beast Elemental with the mutate cost of two hybrid blue, black, two green. A 6 6 trampler that can be cast from the graveyard for with its mutate. And a foil ram through. Already off to a good start. And yeah, boy, would this have been a bomb if uh, my little LGS would able to was able to do. But you know, gotta do what we can to lower that curve. I mean, flatten the curve. Oh, here we go. Uh, flourishing fox, flamesville, cunning night bonder, Zerda dawnbreaker, one hybrid red white. 
Red White for a 3 3 Elemental Fox with Companion. Oh! Foil Cabin Whisperer. Maybe there's a chance I'll get the Godzilla cards. Who knows? Anyways, activate. Uh, basically, Companions. Zerda's companion is each permanent card has to have an activated ability. Activated abilities that aren't mana abilities cost two less to activate. The, but it can't reduce the mana in the cost to less than one mana. One and tap. Target creature can't block this turn. Sonorous Hobblower, Ivy Elemental, Ominous Seas, Voracious Great Shark, 3 2 blue blue for a 5 4 flashing shark that when it enters counter target artifact or creature spell. Momentum Rumbler, Charge of the Forever Beast, fitting because we got bros. Savai Crystal, Offspring's Revenge, two red and red, white, black for an enchantment with begin of combat on your turn. Exile target red, white, or black creature from the graveyard. Create a token, accept it to 1 1 and it gains haste. And a foil primal empathy. Again, this would have been a really powerhouse deck at a pre-release tournament. Easy Prey. Clash of Titans. Boneyard Lurker. Nice. Ooh! Katria Triumph. The Forest Diamond Mountain that enters tapped, but it's the cool comic book art themed. Definitely going in my uh, Zorok deck. A Foil Aegis Turtle. And the count Ability Counters. Last pack before we bust into the box. Skull Prophet, Hunt, Huntmaster Liger, Insatiable Hemophage, Jagatha the Wellspring, four red and, well, four and hybrid red green for an elemental elk with the companion of no card in your starting deck has more than one of the same symbol in its mana cost. So, can run Myth of Brokos, but you can run Brokos. And he taps for Wooberg, but it can't be spent on generic. So yeah, I gotta say, definitely re really liking the Triumph. But definitely loving Brokos. Anyways, on to the next part of the special, the booster box itself. But first, let us do our Ikoria box topper, which will have a Godzilla-themed card. I am, honor ironically, hoping for Brokos. Ooh, we got Destroy a Perfect Life Form. I'm sure Cell would have a different opinion. 
but destroy it in the form of Everquill Phoenix, two red red. Four, uh, four four Phoenix with the mutate cost of three in red. And whenever it mutates, create a red artifact token named Feather, not to be confused with the Angel Feather, that has one Sacrifice Feather, return target Phoenix card from your graver to the battlefield tapped. Let me just speed this up. But if anything, I can just ask my friend for the Brokos Altered Godzilla version. Okay, interesting order compared to the uh, draft packs, but a foil dirge bat at engine got the wellspring again. So this is going to be even faster than I expected. Anyways, on to dirge bat. Two black black for a 3-3 three, three bat with flash and flying with a mutate cost of 4, 2, and 2 black. Whenever it mutates, destroy target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls. And our rare is... Gyruda, Doom of Depths. Four and hybrid blue black blue black for a 6 6 demon kraken with the companion requirement of starting deck containing only even mana conversion costs. Anyways, when it ETBs, each player puts the top four cards of their library into their graveyard, put a creature card with an even converted mana cost from among those cards onto the battlefield under your control. So, pretty good in blink decks. Very nice, we get the Narset of Ancient Ways emblem. Whenever you cast a non creature spell, this emblem deals two good damage to any target. Jungle Hollow, Offspring's Revenge. Ooh, the other version of Huntmaster Liger. May as well uh, put that one to the side. Foil Momentum Rumbler and an Indatha Triumph. I actually got one of these in a in a MTG Arena draft along with Nethroy, Apex of Death. It is the Abzan one of Plain Swamp Force to either tap for white, black, or green, or cycle for three. Valiant Rescuer, Grisco Mentor, Grim Dancer.
Foil Primal Empathy and Lutri, who is sadly banned in Commander, but one hybrid blue blot, red, blue red for an L for a 3 2 elemental otter with flash. His companion cost is basically the reason I got banned in Commander. When Lutri enters the battlefield, if you cast it, copy target incident or sorcery spell you control, you may choose new targets. Parcel Beast. Yeah, I should also keep an eye out for any of the common mutate creatures for their altered art. Token Shark. And we got the Zagoth Triumph. Great for the Brokos. The Swamp Forest Island that enters tapped. Zagoth Mamba. Mentor. Regular Parcel Beast. So that's three Triumphs down. Two left to go. Will we get lucky? The Dino Token. The Eerie Ultimatum. There's also this cycle to keep an eye out for with these openings. Two white, three black, and two green for a sorcery that returns any number of permanent cards with different names from your graveyard to the battlefield. Pretty good in Abzan or Atroxa colored themed decks. Though Atroxa will be a bit hard unless you got the man mana support. Let's check for any uh, altered arts. Soldier token. Ooh, a foil altered art cub warden. And the other one, but let's uh, focus on Cub Warden. Three and a white for a 3-5 cat with a mutate cost of two and a white white. Lifelink, and whenever this creature mutates, create two 1-1 one, one light white cat creature tokens with lifelink. Inspired Ultimatum. The quote-unquote weakest of them, weakest of the ultimatums, because for two blue, three red, and two white, a sorcery that target player gains five life. The ultimatum deals 5 damage to any target, and you draw 5. Uh, basically, the most mean about thing is how the 5 life is pretty pointless. Uh, Altered Art Majestic Oracorn. Uh, just gotta sweep up that uh, Cub Warden. There we go. Yet, so far, no Mythics. Let me just double check, because... So, yeah, so far, no Mythics. The... Because so far, the pre always kit is one. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it's more likely that uh, the Godzilla's cards are only available in the collector's box. Extinction Event. Three and a black. For a sorcery to either choose odd or even, exile each creature with converted mana cost of, that va of the chosen value. Zero is even. Neutralize. Trumpety Gnaw. Porky Parrot. Soldier token. Ruinous ultimatum. Two red, 
Three white, two black for a sorcery to destroy all non-land permanents your opponents control. Migration path, rooting walk, back for more. Actually, let's put a cup board in, in this pile, I guess. Technically, it's a rare. Well, I guess technically more middle. Let's do that. More middle. Because it is both a rare and an alternate art. Soldier. Hunted Nightmare. One and two black for a 4-5 cre Nightmare with Menace. And when it enters, target opponent puts a death counter on a creature they control. Flourishing Fox, Savai Crystal, Cunning Knight Bonder. Foil, Lead the Stampede. And Loris of the Dream Den. Already a modern, basically, yeah, basically a modern powerhouse for white because it is one and hybrid white, black, white, black for a 3 2 cat nightmare with lifelink. Companion requirement of each permanent in your starting deck has a converted mana cost two or less. During each of your turns, you may cast one permanent spell with converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard. The Pouncing Shore Shark puts a Thunder Raptor. Ragoon Crystal. Any altars? Soldiers. Swamp. Slither Wisp. Blue and two black for a 3-2 elemental nightmare with flash. Whenever you cast another spell that has flash, draw a card. Each one loses one life. Pretty good uh, split. Void Beckoner, sadly not the Space Godzilla. Who turns out in the its original printing, that's its, it's the name of its actual attack. It is because it's that. You know, technically if there's a beer named after it, I can say that uh, Space Godzilla's attack was the Corona Beam. You know, just gotta do your research, but obviously it was very poor timing given the circumstances. And has led to the very popular theory that Ulamog was once on Ikoria or had some influence on the plane. Foil Mountain and a Mythos of Vadrock. Two and two red. For a sorcery that deals five damage divided as you choose among number of creatures or planeswalkers. If white blue was spent to cast it, those permanents can't attack or block and their activated abilities can't be activated. No altered art. But yeah, basically, just realized technically it's either the box topper or the collector's box for the Godzilla cards. A hamp hampering snare. Oh ho! Oh well, actually, it's the regular Ketria Triumph for that taps for a blue, green, or a mount red that either enters tapped or cycles for three. Polylog symbiote. Oh, and we get the altar of Porky Parrot. Because, yeah, with some of the creatures, it's almost like they also took inspiration from how Avatar The Last Airbender like to mix their animals. Com well, basically, combine two animals. Like the platypus there. Oh, 
Oh, foil Snapdax Apex of the Hunt. One red, white, and a black for a Dinosaur Cat Nightmare 3 5 with Double Strike. Whenever it mutates, deals 4 damage to Dark Creature or Planeswalker, and opponent controls, and you gain 4 life, and we get the Ragoon Triome! Double nice! Because it is the Altered Art. This is definitely going to look good in my Narset Commander deck. Just got to get the sleeve for Snap Decks. So there we go, our first Mythic, and it is a foil at that. The Ozolith, a 1 mana legendary artifact that whenever a creature you control leaves the battlefield, if it had counters on it, put it on the Ozolith. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if the Ozolith has counters on it, you may move all counters from the Ozolith onto the target creature. We also got a Titanorith Rex, which can be an Alter Godzilla, Primeval Champion. The Almighty Brushwag has blessed us with the box. The Song of Creation, one green, blue, and a red for an enchantment that lets you play an additional land on each of your turns. Whenever you cast a spell, draw two cards, and at your end step, discard your hand. It's a pretty blessing curse sensation. Regular Cavern Whisper, <clears throat> even though I got a foil of it. Oh, wait, what's Ozolith doing in here? Whoops. Right, now all we need is the Mardu Triome, and we have the entire set. Um, the entire cycle, I mean. Blossoming Sounds. Oh, our second Mythic! Luca, Copper Coat, Outcast. Three and two red for the legendary Planeswalker Luca, with a loyalty of five. Exile the top three cards of your library that and your and creature cards exile this way. Gain you may cast this card from exile as long as you control a Luca Planeswalker. Minus two. Exile target creature you control, then reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card with higher converted mana costs. Put it onto the battlefield, right in the bottom of the library. Then the minus seven if you're lucky. Each creature you control deals damage equal to its power to each opponent. Boon of Wishgiver. Lord Jackus. And the Clash of Titans. Let's just get a sweep for Luca. The Genesis Ultimatum for two green, three blue, and two red for a sorcery that looks at lets you look at the top five cards of your library. Put any number of permanent cards from among them onto the battlefield and the rest into hand. Exile the ultimatum. 
Altered Art, Glowstone Recluse. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot that, of course, that buying the box also got me Godzilla, King of Monsters. A.K.A. Zillow Throw Strength Incarnate. 7-3 Legendary Dino that when lethal damage is determined by power rather than toughness. Who is going to be good at, with Gishef. Or any deck with, that has green and red. The cute little kitten with lifelink. Ooh, our third mythic, and also a card I am interested in. Fiend Artisan. Hybrid. Black green, black green for a 1-1 one, one nightmare that gets plus one, plus one for each creature in our graveyard. And also has X and hybrid black green to sacrifice another creature. Search my library for a creature card with converted mana cost. Extra or less, put it on the battlefield. Activate only as a sorcery. Titanor Threx. Regal Leosaur. Proud Wild Bonder. Migratory Greathorn Ultra Art. So yeah. Draneth Magistrate. A 1 in white, 1 3 human wizard that makes your opponents can't cast spells from anywhere other than their hands. Basically, really good in a prisoner style commander deck or, or graveyard hate deck. Bastion of Remembrance, Wingspan Mentor, and another Howl Bonder. Also, let's check for any. Altered Arts. So, so far I've gotten most of the cards I needed. Got Brokos from the pre-release kit. Steamed Artisan and a bunch of the Triumphs in this. I guess all that's left is like Vivian. Oh, and we get the regular Everquill Phoenix, the non-destroyer version. I already explained what it does. Symbiote, Football Crater, Dire Tactics. Pretty good in a human deck. Any Ultra Art? A foil corpse churn and an unpredictable cyclone. Three, two black, two red, two red. I was looking at void back in her. Three and two red for an enchantment. Basically good in Anya decks or any shenanigans that are happening or works well with Yudaro the Wandering. Is it just Yudaro the Wandering? Anyway, cycling ability of another non only card would cause you to draw a card and set exile cards from the top until it shares a card type with a with the cycled card. You may cast the card without paying its mana costs. Then put it cards exiled this way to the bottom in random order. Void Beckoner.
No altered arts. The a regular myth of bro mythos of Brokos. Reminder: It lets you return two permanent cards from your graveyard to hand, but if you also pay the blue and black for the two, you can also tutor for a card and put it to the graveyard. Reconnaissance mission: Will of the All Hunter, General's Enforcer. Any mutate alters? There's a Volta Keep. Foil Gopher Blood and a Bonders Enclave. A rare land that lets you add colorless or to pay three and tap it to draw a card. Activate only if you control a creature with a power four or greater. Easy Prey, Crystal, Shark, Shore Shark. Foil Forest, and a pr Altered Art Broco, not the Godzilla one, but a cool comic book version, that's, that again is a Tramp Order 6-6, six -six that can be cast from the graveyard for its mutate. Just got to sleeve up the cool Ultra Dark Brokos. Now it is a question of which one to use for my commander deck. Death Oasis. White, black, and green for an enchantment that whenever a non-token creature you control dies, put the top two cards of your library into the graveyard. Then return a creature card with lesser converted mana cost than the creature that died from graveyard to hand. You can also sacrifice the oasis to gain life equal to the greatest converted mana cost among creatures you control. Dustfang Mentor. Sanctuary Lockdown. Zenith Fire. Ultra Arts. Umori the Collector. Two and hybrid black green, black green for a legendary ooze with the companion requirement of each non land card in your starting deck shares a card type. But again, sometimes the companion is optional and he, it, they can just be in the 99. Anyways, when it enters, choose a card type. Spells you cast of the chosen type cost one less to cast. Regal Leosaur, Savaya Thundermane, any Ultra Art. Da, 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 da. Nope, no altered arts whatsoever. Ooh, altered arts, Sea Dasher Octopus. One and a blue, blue. For a 2-2 Octopus with a mutate cost of 1 in blue, so pretty good. 
because it has flash, and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. But yeah, pretty good. I do like uh, the Ultra version of the Octopus compared to the regular one. The Labyrinth Raptor. Black and red for a 2-2 Nightmare Dinosaur with Menace. Whenever a creature you control with Menace becomes blocked, the funny player... Sacrifice a creature blocking it. And you can also pay black and red to make your creatures with menace get plus one plus oh until on a turn. Pretty good if I ever make plans on uh, changing Gishath to like a uh, Morphon Rainbow Dinosaurs. But I don't exactly have plans because it works fine just as Gishath because. Not only would I have to fix the mana base again, there aren't as many, aside from the recent Aquaria dinosaurs, not much in blue or black, except for Nezahol. Can't forget uh, the powerful Plesiosaur. Foil de Squad Marshall. Whirlwind of Thought. One blue, red, and white for an enchantment. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, draw a card. However, I am more of a fan of Jeskai Ascendancy, but it is good if you are on a budget. I guess. The alter... There we go! Vulpakeet! Alter Art. Uh, what else would I want from a Coria? Uh, the 330 Beast. Aside from the 330 Beast for a Trumpeting Gnar. Yorion Sky Nomad. Three and hybrid white blue, white blue. For the legendary bird serpent. With the requirement of starting deck contains at least 20 cards more than the minimum deck size. When it enters the battlefield, exile any number of any number of other non land permits you won't and control. Return to the battlefield at the beginning of the next end step. Bastion, Barrier Breach, Zavaya Thundermane. Huh. But yeah, Reinhardt's worst fear is Barrier being breached by a Bastion. Especially with a shield nerf, kinda. Soldier. Oh, yes! Shark Typhoon! I haven't seen the Sharknado movies except for the first one by the Nostalgia Critic, guest starring Cinema Snob. But yeah, in our. With Shark Typhoon, it is 5 and a blue for an enchantment that whenever you cast a non creature spell, you create a shark token with power and toughness equal to the converted mana cost. <laughs> recording. Uh, have Boneyard Lurker. Two packs left to open for this video. Let us see what we get. Hopefully, maybe Vivian. Ooh, our, another mythic, Riel the other, Everwise. One blue and red for a human wizard, zero three, with, that gets plus one, plus zero for each instant sorcery in our graveyard. Whenever you discard one or more cards for the first time you straw, turn, draw that many. Any altar arts? Get a sleeve for Riel. 
Last pack. Can we get what uh, again? What can we get aside from the Mardu? I actually do need the this Dino Beast tote. Lava Lava Brink Venturer. Two and a white for a three three human soldier that when it enters the battlefield, choose odd or even. It has protection from each converted mana cost of the chosen value. Necro Panther, no altar art. And that is it. Gotta say, really loving Akoria, aka the Kaiju set, because yeah, even from the name I knew we were entering a kaiju themed world. Just was a sweet benef bonus to have the Godzilla themed cards. But that is gonna be another video when uh my friend at his shop gets uh, collector boxes. He will let me know, and I will buy just one. Because I'm not exactly made of money. Anyways, thank you for your time. I will upload the other magic videos I forgot to upload after recording them. And maybe finally get some streaming equipment for that uh, upcoming Samurai Jack game. Because at least got a... Because maybe that'll be the game to transition from a Samurai Jack to the name I have in mind. Okay, again, thank you for your time, and bye.